Good day! So, um, I've got this old tube radio from my granduncle and it has been giving me a little bit of a problem over the last weeks uh, which was a weaker and weaker reception on FM. Now, um, that could either be faulty alignment, which is very unlikely because the alignment doesn't change when it's running, it's only when you change the circuitry, for example. Um, the second thing would be maybe a weak oscillator tube, which is also unlikely because uh, I replaced it when I had it new. And the third one would be a weak selenium rectifier. So um, these selenium rectifiers get faulty all the time. And um, I measured the voltage on this one and we were supposed to have 260 volts DC coming out of the rectifier. We only had 200 volts. So um, that one had to come out. Uh, nowadays selenium rectifier however are no longer produced or available because they are pretty dangerous and hazardous and um, they are also pretty inefficient and uh, nowadays uh, you only get silicon rectifier r rectifiers and uh, I had to replace uh, the selen selenium one with a silicon rectifier the problem with that however is that a silicon rectifier uh, is a lot more efficient which in first place doesn't seem like a problem but actually uh, all the voltages on the tubes will get too high because um, Usually on a selenium rectifier you have a certain voltage drop across it and uh, with a silicon rectifier that isn't given. So um, on the internet there are usually uh, uh, solutions to that by just wiring uh, a resistor in series with it which drops the voltage down to what you need. But um, in the first 15 to 20 seconds when the radio is warming up the entire circuit doesn't draw any current so basically the uh, resistor is not really doing its job and way too high uh, voltage is on for example the electrolytic capacitors and also on the tubes for the first couple of seconds which can be pretty harmful for the radio so I searched for a little bit more elegant version and um, I thought maybe we could remove uh, a couple of turns from the secondary winding of the transformer so that uh, the output voltage of the transformer is reduced by the amount that we need it to so that the silicon rectifier can just go into the circuit without any other changes to it. So that's what we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do is take a, a silicon rectifier and put some anti-hum capacitors across each diode they're about 47 nanofarad. Because um, a silicon rectifier is somewhat different in what it behaves like, and it can cause disturbing noises on long wave, medium wave, and maybe even short wave. So um, these hum capacitors basically eliminate that and um, should give it a better quality. And for the next thing we're going to see how much voltage we need to uh, run the silicon rectifier without any other changes. Okay, so you're now seeing the radio from underneath and um, I've got temporarily installed the rectifier over here. These two leads are the AC in leads which we're going to hook a variac up to and then they are going to the terminals for plus and minus inside the radio. So the selenium rectifier is already removed from the circuit. Um, however, it will stay in for optical uh, looks, uh, but that's really all the selenium rectifier is going to do in future. And now we are going to hook up a meter to the plus and minus and uh, then cr slowly crank the variac up until uh, we reach the proper voltage and we note down what input voltage we need for that and uh, then we're going to start unwinding the transformer. Okay, after having made sure three and four times that everything is good and nothing is wrong, uh, we're now going to slowly crank up the variac and we are looking for 260 volts DC on the rectifier. So here we go.
Okay, there we are. And the Varac is reading pretty much exactly 180 volts. So 180 volts on the output of the transformer is what we're looking for. So this is the uh, wiring diagram or setup diagram of the mines transformer of this radio. And over here we have a total of 1290 windings and currently the output is 1370 windings and it's putting out 230 volts. Now we want this to be lowered and we want this to be 180 volts so we need to remove some windings off of this side and doing a little bit of math um, we come to a total of 1009 windings that we need to have on the secondary side because the uh, ratio between the input and the output voltages is the same ra ratio uh, between the primary and secondary winding or the amounts of turns on the primary and secondary winding and um, so we will need to remove about 360 windings off of this transformer to get where we want to be. Okay, to get the transformer out of here we just need to remove these four bolts. Underneath there are also two and um, then we need to bend over a tab on the front which I'll show you now. This is the two tabs that we need to bend over which will make removing this uh, plastic field here possible and then these are the bolts that uh, are holding on the transformer and the whole thing should come right out and we possibly need to remove these brown wires from the switch as well. Okay so I removed the wires from the switch I bent these tabs over to release this plastic plate and I removed the nuts and of course the wirings uh, to the electrics of this thing and now the transformer should be coming right out which it is so it's a great time for cleaning this uh, dirt all up and then we'll proceed with doing work to this transformer now before you think of doing this to your radio you should be uh, sure that the anode winding is the outermost so where the high voltage is coming out that should be the last layer put on so that you can easily access it because otherwise you will need to remove the other windings as well and that would just be next to impossible so these are the two wires that go to the anode winding and you can see this is on the outer edge of the windings so we're fine here okay first thing we're going to do is removing these four screws which are holding the metal plates together so that we can get these out and then we should end up with just the coils and then we can start removing the windings alright the screws are out now we can have access to these plates and there's a little seam on these sides so that's where the two plates are splitting that's where we're going to go in maybe with a knife or with a, a screwdriver and try and pry this open this might be taking a little bit of force but you know we'll, we'll be careful and hopefully everything will stay intact alright so it's starting to move now um, this first sheet was just laying on here and held by lacquer so that could be just pried off easily and uh, this part I took a screwdriver and a hammer and then just put it in the vise and then lightly tapped it on these sides um, until it started to come out so it's really not doing any damage and now we are able to pull this out by hand and you can see the next shim already started to come out so now it's going to go really really easily so here's the cover of the transformer. Here are all the remainders of the core, the E and I section. And here's the transformer. I've been extremely carefully removing the cover sheet. And now you can see here this is the wire going in and starting right here. 
and now I'm going to remove 300 windings or 309 or whatever it was and um, let's do that okay after several hours of careful unwinding and putting back together testing it just making sure I'm not removing too much wire I'm finally at the point all the math uh, came out right so we're having 230 volts on this and I have to excuse that uh, but this uh, voltmeter is a little bit fucked so um, you always have to look at the lowest number it's showing right at the moment that's around 176, 174 if you look at it for a while you can, can see that so we're 5 volts low from what we originally wanted but you know better 5 volts low than 5 volts high I mean it was like 30 or 40 volts low uh, when we started out so that should be making a good improvement so one final time I'm going to take this apart then uh, putting on the covers and insulation sheets and uh, then putting this fully to get back together installing it and we'll see what it's going to do well it's back together and no one will notice any difference even managed to get the logo back on again and for the insulation paper I just use regular baking paper you know it, it insulates and it's heat resistance uh, resistant so that's just what you need and we're running it on the Variac with 230 volts we've got an output of 186 volts roundabout yeah 186 and um, that is right what we wanted so we'll let it run for a while now see if it, it becomes any hot I probably will put a light bulb or something as a load onto there to see if it responds in any way gets too hot or something that might suggest I did something wrong and if it doesn't it's going back into the radio okay so here we are and right now uh, the radio is warming up you can see the voltage is dropping a little bit and we've got around 236 volts uh, on the rectifier which is a little bit low but you know it's far better than the selenium rectifier with 200 volts DC so um, I also put some nail uh, paint onto the nuts that hold on the transformer because the transformer is vibrating and you want to secure it just so these nuts don't loosen off and uh, let's turn the radio around and see how it's doing So the radio is playing well again and my final statement about this should be if you know what you're doing and you're proceeding with care then this is a valuable alternative to the uh, resistor in series with the rectifier to keep the voltage down and it is also uh, seems to be saving the transformer a lot because this transformer in here hasn't barely gotten warm over time now seems to uh, draw a lot less current when you just reduce the uh, voltage on the secondary winding. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching.